Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's been a long time since I've put a video on this channel. Um, I, you know, I've had a bit of an inkling in the last little while to potentially start making videos again, and I thought, well, I'm going to do a little bit of a different one this time because, um, I, I, as you can see, I'm in my house rather than out at the cabin. But uh, I'm going to make this video as a call for help from anyone who is an experienced hydronic engineer, technician, plumber, someone who has a really good idea of hydronic systems. Um, and certainly in cold weather climates like we are here in the, in the Northwest Territories where it gets down to minus 40 uh, on a regular occasion during the coldest months. <clears throat> so I'll cut to the chase. Um, I won't I'll try not to make this video too long, um, but uh, you know, I've been battling with these heat issues in my house for quite some time. I'm trying to get some peace of mind. Um, I've had several different people come out locally and obviously because, you know, um, we're quite resource constrained up here and obviously other parts of Canada that you know, uh, a lot of the time they come in, it's more of a break fix service rather than a really dig into engineering type issues or how it's architecturally set up, if that's even the right phrase. Um, and I'm just looking for someone online who probably deals with these on more often, who maybe has the time, uh, just to comment and see if we see, see if you can provide any other ideas that maybe get these, these issues I'm having uh, better. Um, I'll just full disclaimer that I am not a hydronics technician, I'm not qualified. I've just solely learned what I've learned by poking or prodding and doing some research and talking to the occasional technician that's come out to help me with a few different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this video down into several different pieces. I'll run through the system, what we've got, what I've got, how it's all set up, um, and, and then I'll run through the couple of issue, a couple of the main issues that I'm having, and uh, kind of go from there. And if you if you have time, you know I'd appreciate it. Um, I figure this may be a good way to reach out to people in other parts of the world who deal with hydronic systems who have dealt with it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and can provide some feedback. Maybe I can p pass that on to, you know, the local technicians here or something. And also I'm just creating this video so uh, I can take a cut of it and send send the setup to maybe someone in the south to have a look at. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone. So. I'll go through the system now. Um, like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a technician. Um, I'll just give you a quick idea. The house uh, the house is about 20 uh, 2300 square feet. It's 400 square foot garage, as well as uh, it has the the crawl space which I'm in right now, which is the I guess the perimeter of the entire home. So that would then add kind of a bit of a dead space between the bedrock uh, here. This is rock that was sat on. Um, all the way, uh, so that would be whatever half of 2,300 square foot is um, 1,250 square foot of crawl space that we have to heat. Um, the, the, it's, it's a fairly basic hydronic system. So it, it's, um, it's a TFT 155 NCI boiler um, that uh, is uh, got four zones. So we've got hot water, the indirect hot water tank, which is on the other side of this wall. I've got the crawl space radiant heat, so this heats to 1,250 square feet, or not 1,250 square feet, 1,100 square feet, sorry, my math uh, on the fly isn't great. Um, 1,100 square feet of the crawl space, and then we've got the radiant in-floor heating slab, which we'll come back to later, we'll talk about later. And then we've got the, um, the pipe that goes to the fan coil, which, uh, <clears throat> the, that goes to the fan coil, which blows the hot air inside the home. Sorry, someone's just trying to call me. Uh, okay, so what I'll do is, is I'm gonna walk through the system here and I'll, I'll try to explain it as best I possibly can. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this as 0.5 so I can actually get the view of everything. So I'll try to walk through everything as much as I possibly can. Sorry, it's a little cramped down here. If I'm, a, oh God, if, uh, if it's, uh, if you can't see anything, just ask in the uh, ask in the comments so I can clarify. So we have TFT 155 boiler, which is rated at 155,000 BTU. According to the Energy Alliance company that I've just had out to do uh, an efficiency test on my home, apparently based on the square footage of just the interior aspect of the home, not taken into consideration the garage, I only need 77,000 BTU. So supposedly this is sized accordingly, um, but we'll go from there. So this is, yeah, TFT and uh, 155 boiler, um, we've got the uh, low water cutoff, we've got the pressure gauge here which is set to 15 psi and uh, we've got the hot water cutoff up there which I think is the, the thermostat set to 200 degrees. We've got some valve air leakage things at the top there. Um, come in, we've got an overflow tank, we've got a couple circ pumps, zone one and two, which I think is just the kind of the in and the out. Uh, and we've got um, 
we've got four zone valves going out. So hot water, crawl space, in-floor, and then the fan coil, and then obviously the return lines on this side. Um, and then through here, this is where I can let some cold water into the line uh, if the pressure gets low um, and uh, you know, return valve and those types of things. We use a 50-50 split of uh, antifreeze, um, basically, in our water, just so it doesn't freeze um, if our heating goes out. So that's kind of the bulk of in there. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. And in here, uh, there's the fan coil that feeds the hot air up into the house. And we'll come back to that later. So that's just a basic three quarter inch copper pipe that kind of runs under the crawl space. As you can see, she gets a little tight in here, but for you guys, I will make sure I will make it happen. Oh, sorry, while I adjust myself here. Okay, so here's the indirect hot water tank. You sit down. This is the indirect hot water tank. And uh, this is the three-way valve, which is feeding the garage. So this is the garage loop, these two pipes. This is the mixer valve. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail on that in a minute. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the hot water tank with a bunch of pipes. This is kind of where all my water comes in. Main water line comes in here. This is the main water line in. So that's basically the system. So what I'll do is while I'm sat over here, I will explain what we've got going on on this side. Oh, and just to, sorry. And that pipe around the outside is the pipe that feeds the hydronic line around the crawl space here, which keeps it warm, which is controlled by this thermostat here uh, that you can see just under there, that Honeywell one. Okay, so the issues I've been having is one of two things. Actually, hold on a second. All right, I'll explain it this way. I'm clearly out of breath from that crawling. That's not a good sign. Anyhow, um, so basically, um, issue number one is that the crawl space, uh, the garage is a radiant heated concrete slab. Now, that radiant, I'm gonna move this a little bit. That radiant concrete slab, that concrete slab takes a long time to warm up. And obviously living somewhere where it's minus 40, as soon as you open the garage door to drive out of it, because uh, we do park in the garage, uh, the, um, it obviously loses heat right away. You can't get away from it. And uh, the thermostat obviously then comes on and um, the boiler will, will run for a couple of hours until that floor heats up. Uh, which is, in my opinion, quite inefficient. That you have to, the boiler almost has to run while the water circulates until the slab is warm enough, and it overshoots it um, because they don't have a floor sensor or anything. But it overshoots it, um, and then as soon as you open the garage door again, uh, rinse, wash, repeat. Right. So it's kind of annoying. Um, and what uh, it's. The boiler itself um, is set right now, and this is something I'll talk about in a minute. It's set to 170 degrees uh, water. Now, um, it, 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 we have to have this mixing valve in here. And, and when I moved in, it was just a two-way mixing valve. So this mixing valve I got installed this year is basically so it takes the water off the return line and filters it back into the, the hot water coming from the boiler. And I've kind of adjusted it now to the point where it feeds the radiant floor about 130 to 140 degrees, maybe a little bit warmer on the colder days because it probably loses heat before it goes there because it's not crazy warm down here. Um, and before it was a two-way tap with a, with a thermostat on it, which it would just open and close every time it would go over 130 degrees. Um, uh, so basically the boiler was running even longer because as soon as that valve was shut, it would just be circulating kind of like lukewarm water until it reopened again and closed again. So the valve was constantly opening and closing and it was making the boiler run a lot longer than what it should have. Now, that valve, three-way valve, allows the water to continuously flow from the boiler, send the excess back, but feed the cold water up into the return line. So it has, I think, reduced the length of time the boiler runs when there is an issue um, uh, sorry, it, it allows the boiler to run less because the water is more, I guess, more fluent to the radiant heat in the garage, which allows it to basically 
um, warm up a little bit faster. It, but the boiler still runs for at least like an hour or so, if not if not longer. Before it was probably running for three, four, now it's probably running, running for one or two. So we may have cut down a little bit on the fuel cost consumption from there. But I guess my biggest question is, is this really optimal for a place where it's minus 40 and that you constantly use in the garage and the boiler's constantly running? Because I don't really use the boiler for anything really outside of the... the I don't use it for the fan coil often, and I'll come to that in a minute. But um, I use it for everything else. So if I cut this out, which is probably the biggest fuel consumption thing, I just wonder whether I'm going to cut my fuel bill by like three quarters because it's not running constantly every day or day every day. The other issue I'm having is it seems that the thermostat, once it gets very close to that turning point of, say, whatever I set it to, let's say it's nine degrees, it, 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 if it gets close to that nine degrees, it will constantly flick on and off, causing the boiler to basically short cycle. Obviously, there is an there is an anti short cycle on the boiler itself, but the boiler but it will constantly flick on and off until like a cold a cold burst of air comes in, and basically um, kicks off kick, kicks it down low enough where the boiler just keeps it going and then it overshoots over. So I'm not quite sure. I replaced the thermostat last year and it still seems to be doing the same issue. So I don't know if maybe it's a transformer issue or if it's just that type of thermostat because I replaced it with the same thermostat. If you have any ideas of why why it happens, it's just one of those mechanical diety ones that you can set um, the degree. It's, it's like constantly on and off once it gets close to the set point. It's quite annoying because um, it's like boilers constantly igniting and stopping, igniting and stopping. Um, so anyhow, that's uh, that's what's happening there. So. I was thinking maybe I could put a, a you know a propane fed hot hot, uh, hot air heater like you know on the on the wall and rather and have it blow hot air into the garage rather than doing the radiant slab um, and I don't know if that's a good idea I don't think it'd be that expensive to get done and I think on the fuel savings that I would get from not running the boiler around the clock or you know every time you open the garage door it runs for three hours. I feel like that would be a much smarter idea because you're just heating the air in the room as soon as it gets up to temperature, it just shuts off again. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Okay, so issue number two, um, and I'll go to the fan coil side of things now. So the fan coil is supposedly rated the right size. And the problem I have is that the fan coil doesn't seem to blow hot enough air. And it is... Um, I'll scrap down here. So it's it's all fed through these like two inch pipes up into the house and they're all kind of by the windows. Um, but the fan coil doesn't seem to blow crazy hot air. Now, when I first moved in here and I started to dig into this, I found the set points of the boiler weren't set up properly. And I think they were set up primarily for the in-floor heating because they were set to like 125, 130 degrees. Now, I'm just gonna sit here. Now, what I found was is that this TFT-155 boiler has an outdoor sensor on it, and that outdoor sensor helps the boiler modulate so it doesn't burn as much heat as, or doesn't burn as much fuel when it's warmer, uh, so it's not giving it full throttle type of thing, right? And then once it gets to the set point of whatever you set it at uh, for your, cold, your, out, your outdoor temperature, it will then give it full throttle. I found they had the outdoor temperature setting to minus 40 Celsius, which means that it would have to get to minus 40 before it gives the system full power. So when you're in that kind of that range around kind of minus 20 to minus 30, the house would take, would it would just never warm up. It would just be blowing 110 degree air. And this, and this is Fahrenheit, sorry. I know I'm in Canada, but this is Fahrenheit. All the temperatures I'm talking about here are all, all Fahrenheit. Um, so it would just be blowing like 100, 110 degree air, which is feeble, but it's minus 20 outside. The house would never warm up. Quite, it's quite an open concept home, so it does it does take a little bit. So once I kind of figured that bit out and I changed the set points on the boiler, then everything seemed to kind of be okay after that um, to a to a degree. And obviously, then I had to deal with the issue of of the um, radiant hotline going to the garage because I didn't want that going there at 170 degrees. So now I've kind of got that balanced. 170 degrees is better, but it's not really that hot. I was talking to someone the other day and they say they, they, they have their NTI boiler set to 190 degrees. Now, I'm a little worried having it set to 190 degrees because my hot water cut, uh, my temperature cut off is 200 and sometimes it does have a tendency to overshoot itself by a few degrees. So I've got to be careful where I'm at. But one guy I know who lives out of Ontario, he told me that he sets his boiler to 190 degrees, or he thinks it is anyway. 
So I'm wondering whether or not I just don't have it, the, the hot water going out. Um, I just don't have a set to a high enough set point. Um, domestic water set to 165. But um, the the boiler, yeah, the boiler's set to 170 right now. And I'm thinking maybe because we are in the Arctic and it is minus 40, maybe I should have it up higher. Maybe like 185, maybe that's a safe bet. Because it's not going to overshoot by 15 degrees. Um, but then I get into the efficiency issues with, hey, um, uh, with the condensing side of things. I'm not entirely sure how that piece works. But anyhow, just a, just a thought, if anyone has any ideas on what NTI border should be set for, if you live in a place uh, at uh, minus, uh, minus 40, the domestic hot water has got its own kind of um, feature on it that you can set that to 100 and... 65 so that just ticks over fine i don't have any problems with the domestic hot water but primarily it's just anything going to the fan core and i do wonder whether or not because the fan core is getting a bit old whether or not is a little bit of like lime like it's i think i read online that it's it can build up of lime scale and maybe maybe it's that that's causing the issue it's not absorbing the heat off of it uh, as as better as what it used to when it was new um the other thing too it just doesn't seem to really blow very forceful air like if you go to somewhere who has like a propane furnace uh, the hot air speed it pulls, that comes out is like rapid. It's like quite powerful. That kind of seems kind of lame. I'm not going to lie. Like it's pretty feeble. If it could blow a little harder and get the air further into the home, then I feel like it, the house would warm up a bit better. But the general heat of the home is a bit of an issue as well. So I'm kind of wondering whether or not it's just not outputting enough heat or and or uh, the fan cord is on its ass uh, and it needs to be replaced. Uh, with something a little bit more powerful uh, that can blow a little bit more forcefully. But um, that's obviously a bit more of an expensive job. So I'm really interested to know, there's a lot of information and I've spilled it out fairly quickly and I think I've covered most of the two major issues I've got um, is set points on the boiler uh, for as well as the fan core and obviously what I should do about the garage loop and whether I should take that out of the equation and just put in a propane heater that blows like a, one of those heater fans. You buy them from Canadian Tire for like $900 or something. You mount it on the wall, it connects to a propane line, it just blows hot air out in in the garage. So anyhow, um, I hope I've covered it all. I hope, um, I hope, yeah, someone maybe picks up on this who is an experienced uh, uh, technician and uh, can maybe give me a, a few pointers on what I should do. Um, again, just keep in mind, 2,300 square foot home, 400 square foot garage, and obviously this dead space, crawl space, which has all my pipes and everything. Um, anyhow, thanks for watching, and hopefully someone picks this up, and I can get these heating issues under control. Well, actually, I forgot to add, sorry, before you all leave, uh, I forgot to add is that, yeah, so I don't use the fan coil on uh, an excessive amount. I only use it if I'm not here. Um, I use a pellet stove inside the house like 99.9% .9 of the time because uh, it gives off better heat and it's, it's more cost efficient to use pellets than it is propane. So I do heat the inside of the house primarily on the pellet stove and that uh, will, um, that, that's the reason why I don't use that a lot. But when I do leave, I don't want to be constantly worried that my house isn't warm enough. Certainly if it suddenly goes down to minus 40, I, the last thing I want is my boiler running 24 seven and the fan coil running 24 seven. Like, I'm never going to end up getting away. Like, it's just going to drink propane out of the tanks, right? So anyhow, I hope that clarifies everything. If you have any questions or have I missed anything, feel free to just leave me a comment. I will get back to you as soon as I can. But uh, sorry for a different type of video. I figured I'd ask help so some, some people actually know what they're talking about. And uh, if there's any progress, I will release another video. Anyhow, uh, keep, a, keep an eye out for anything new coming. Um, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to be releasing more videos uh, back at the cabin here soon, but um, Thanks for now, and uh, I look forward to seeing some comments.